Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and we are delighted to welcome you here at the Gaidar Forum. In November last year, uh, heads of our regions, together with uh, federal ministers, discussed the strategy for further development of our housing sector and construction business. And a lot has been discussed back then. And today we will discuss this with the deputy head of the government of the Russian Federation, Mr. Husnulin. Mr. Husnulin, what is the the objective of the new strategy. The new strategy is um, it implies a more comprehensive approach, and it is more focused on improving the quality of life of our people. And I really mean it, improving the quality of life across the, all aspects of construction sector, including, including housing and Last year, we managed to commission a record high number of um, um, housing space, like 90 million square meters. And we want to align housing, cons construction of housing with um, transportation infrastructure. And we have to put that in the context of where, where our people want to live, because 30 percent of our population are going to change the place where they live in two or three years from now. So where are they going to live? Somebody will live in the rural areas. Somebody will migrate to large cities. So so we have to keep this in mind, and we have to take that into account when we draft our strategy. And we have aligned the construction strategy together with utilities and housing. And for the first time in our history, we have this deep integration of one strategy into another, because without setting the housing and the utilities sector in order, it will be impossible for us to implement all our construction plans. And utilities, housing and utilities, they have a lot of impact upon the entire sector. It's about sewage system, it's about electricity supply, water supply. And normally, utilities is the biggest problem for our municipalities. Yes, indeed. And a lot of work needs to be done there. A lot of networks have to be repaired. A lot of infrastructure has to be built. And our construction strategy is uh, aligned with uh, the number of schools that we need, number of uh, medical institutions that are needed. So we want construction business to become uh, to drive development in the regions. We want construction business to create jobs, to pay taxes, to become the source of tax revenues. So it's a more comprehensive and more consistent approach. And it's not just about construction, because before construction was looked at as a standalone business. But actually, construction is very deeply integrated into the country's economy. Construction generates 12 percent of tax revenues today and 17 percent of tax revenues if you look at the suppliers and adjacent businesses. So we have to make sure that construction business addresses the interests of our citizens, that it, it develops, it uh, in, increases its contribution to the economy. And that's what the strategy is about. Okay. But last year, you kept saying that, and you discussed that with the governors of various regions, that we need to look at construction business holistically. So we need to think about developing cities, about developing territories. We need to make sure that we build housing, we create utilities infrastructure, we create roads. Well, what kind of specific actions does your strategy imply? Is there an action plan? Yes. One feature of this strategy is that it is extremely specific. And we have targets set by the president. Like, for example, we want to start, we want to commission 120 million square meters of housing a year. So we want to maintain this year, meaning that in the upcoming 10 years, 1 billion square meters of housing will be commissioned. Uh, that's an enormous task. We have to build a system allowing for improving living conditions for 5 million families at least. So 5 million families should either be capable of renovating their ha homes 
or moving into larger apartments. And we also think about the quality of urban life, and because a lot needs to be done there. And and we suggest that a comprehensive approach should be taken here. Did you manage to, and I, let me rephrase this, I, I understand that you discussed that a lot and you argued about a lot of aspects with the governors. Did you manage to come to the consensus? We have really good understanding with the governors and we, we we have very close contact with them. Every th we have weekly meetings on Thursday. We have video conference calls with all the governors. We and we th and we have thoroughly discussed this strategy with them. We discussed what we need from the standpoint of the regulatory framework. Uh, what what needs to be done in procurement, what needs to be done in construction itself. So our governors have thorough understanding of what we want to achieve. And this is the strategy to which they contributed directly. Okay, talking about the housing and utilities sector. Indeed, uh, infrastructure, housing, uh, utilities infrastructure is worn out. And it requires a lot of investment. Private investors are reluctant to invest because the payback period is quite long and the business model for the payback is, not, is also not very clear to many investors. So, so what what do you have in your strategy regarding housing and utilities sector? We believe that utilities sector and infra utilities infrastructure is an integral part of construction effort, and we are heavily focusing on renewing or building new infrastructure. That's part. Of that that's one of our priorities. Like. Uh, water, building water supply networks, water treatment facilities, huge uh, effluent water treatment facilities. So on the one hand, we have to create a lot of infrastructure. On the other, we need to set existing infrastructure in order. And failing to do either of these things will prevent us from achieving our target. And, and you are right, our utilities networks are worn out. And that means that on an annual basis, we need to renew up to 5% of our total utilities networks. We are currently doing only 2%, which means that we are lagging behind. We are lagging behind. And it's not about the quality of service here. It's about the fact of whether you have this service or not. I mean, if your water supply network is 70 or 80% worn out, uh, then you probably won't have water supply at all. So we have looked into these things. We have created several mechanisms which would help us to achieve, I, I would even call it this way, a breakthrough in, in the housing and utilities sector. Another aspect of our work is efforts to curb greenhouse gas emissions. And utilities sector is a large emitter of greenhouse gases. We have um, a lot of coal firing boilers which provide heat. We have coal firing power stations. We have uh, boilers burning fuel oil and they create a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. So that's part of our effort. So you have to upgrade your utilities networks and in, in the view of the ESG factors. Yeah. Also losses. <coughs> we are current what loss of water is 25%, loss of heat is 12%, and all these losses are currently covered by our consumers. So we have to address that as well. And that would uh, mean involving budgeted and private financing. And we need to renew the utilities sector. And this renovation needs to go in line with the development of our construction business. And, and that also includes matters like how do we do 
make uh, major repairs, whether our people will be happy with the repair that we are doing. We understand that the cost for all these upgrades need to, I mean, the, the bill should be footed by everyone, by the state authorities, by the municipalities, by the utility companies, and by the consumers. Like you just said that the consumers are covering 20% of the losses that we have in our networks. So this comprehensive upgrading of the housing and utilities, will it increase the cost of tariffs for residents? Well, it will be different for a person it's not important uh, what is the cost, the tariff, but uh, how much uh, the person pays, accounting 25% being lost. If tomorrow we reduce losses uh, in the grids, in the networks, so the tariff can be higher, but the person will not pay more. It depends on how the person pays at the end of the day. Today, in nearest years, so to find this opportunity to uh, increase the wear and tear where the tariff will go up but the end payment will not uh, increase. It's important. It's different in our regions. We have wear and tear much higher with 78% uh, of wear with pipe work, leakages and of course we cannot um, repair all the pipework networks with the tariff, it would not be possible for the population. You need to find the solutions and find the strategy. Secondly, you need to understand that investments are never coming to the industry if you don't have a well understanding tariff, and we have to restrict it. This year, we decided that the Russian tariff should not be higher than 4%. And in the regions, it is lower, but the inflation rate this year is 7 to 8 percent. And where there's the difference, where the housing companies are taking money for the um, funding, and the Federation will not find them. And you have regions, you have Moscow uh, that can cover it with all the budget, but you have uh, 35 to 40 regions which need subsidies. They need subsidies from the budget. If you would look here into the budget for the last year, and we had to check money. Uh, where the regions lacked money to, to fix the tariffs for housing and utilities. How would you evaluate the involvement of invest in, investments involvement in 2021 who came to construction industry and uh, housing? In particular, did you see any activities of the private capital? It's very clear. Uh, so it was 43% uh, higher than in 2020 uh, as existing investors and new investors. Yes, the price went up, but it had to do with the international inflation mortgage, the lack of supply in the market, but today without offering new supply and you cannot uh, pick the price down. So when the price is reasonable, uh, you have the investors. And I come a lot to see people in the regions. You have just one or two developers in the regions. When you come uh, with the higher the the highest developer the portfolio is for uh, 12 thousand uh, uh, square meters and the fourth has five thousand square meters and how do you plan to resolve the problems and they are 
the most powerful in the region and you need to find a mechanism on how to encourage them. And I believe that in 67 cities we had no new construction in 2020. At the moment um, you have construction projects everywhere. Construction projects are profitable, but in housing and utility. So we made a decision at the end of the year on concession agreements and we see that uh, large investors and new uh, stakeholders are coming to the industry. Uh, we need to encourage investments. Without investment, we are getting nowhere. Okay, let's talk about the transport infrastructure related to the comprehensive development to territory development. If it uh, involves transportation development in the regions, yes, we have like the environmentally mobile city program. Our cities are growing, the number of vehicles is increasing, and it's not possible to um, expand the transportation networks in existing cities. We need to develop the public transportation. And the interesting trend is that in recent uh, 10 years, the number of public transportation went down by 10 percent because uh, the passenger cars are being bored, there is a booming, and it's not comfortable to use the public transportations. And in some cities we are comparable to the U.S. and the U.S. Uh, are the country with the uh, highest uh, passenger cars and we cannot catch up with building the roads and in our cities we can only manage with the public transportation and we have a separate program for developing the infrastructure uh, roads, uh, railways, like in Moscow and H more regions, developing the tramways, developing all the types of public transportation, and we invest money in that, and we have a systemic approach. We are not bad in that in terms of regulations. It's one thing to build the road but you also need to maintain the conditions. In last year, the brutality fell by uh, 9%. So we have uh, 60,000 of uh, victims a year, and uh, uh, it's an average Russian city. So it's due to uh, so the main three reasons or just uh, uh, being on the wrong side of the road, driving drunk and uh, running across a pedestrian. Well, we all noticed that it's not that bad you can travel uh, from Moscow to Vladivostok in your own car. It wasn't possible. But now I know a lot of travelers who do this. But apart from the roads, you also have uh, road infrastructure, filling stations, uh, hotels, washing stations. Do you see any interest uh, from investors to road infrastructures? Uh, the interest is really high every year. It's rising, but you need to invest much more money. And today, uh, the limiting factor is not money, but the physical possibility. You cannot build and update that number of roads. Uh, we are thinking about like a mega project, Moscow to Kazan to Yekaterinburg. We plan to build this road in three years, and we built Moscow to St. Petersburg road in eight years, and this central road 
uh, around Moscow was built in 13 years, and we would like to build it mm, till uh, 2014. But we still lack roads, and we clearly understand that we need to increase volumes, that we need to attract investors, and we have the possibilities where to build roads, where to have bypasses around the cities, where you need to build new roads, where to have repair and maintenance. But the road infrastructure for today it should work for reducing the travel time. The travel time for a person and the travel time for a cargo and the cost of a cargo uh, is that influences the travel infrastructure. Why I started to talk about the toll roads because everywhere. So we built uh, 11 roads, but we missed money. Now, as for Moscow to Kazan, we will have uh, 13 development points with the filling stations, uh, with hotels, with warehousing areas. So if we have an investor, let them build. And there is a great deal of an interest, and you need to help to the business and the transport to develop. So, but this is what it is done by the heads of constituents, the regions. Well, we have two points. We have uh, 59 kilometers of uh, federal roads built. Well, we have uh, regional and municipal roads, and depending on the road networks, it depends. It's up to the heads of constituents, of course. Okay, now let's talk about the housing uh, commission. 120 million square meters annually till 2024. Uh, 2029, I'm sorry very ambitious plans, but apart from investment and the speed you are growing every year, they correlate to demand on the side of the consumer. Please let us know, in developing the strategy for developing the construction industry, does the government have any uh, plans for encouraging demand for the new housing and developing the mortgage or other tools? Yes, of course, uh, together with ICG, we did it and we analyzed our approach in terms of demand and supply, and we had seven clusters present with high demand and high supply and low demand and low supply and analyzing the work with the regions the picture is very interesting and very exciting so the two clusters out of the seven account for 60 percent regions capitals where you have high demand and high uh, supply. When we analyzed on whether there will be demand for that volume of housing, you have a limit, the lowest limit of sensitivities to build 120 meters, million square meters. We need uh, a growth of real population incomes of 2.5%. If it's not the case, you don't have the demand. 47% of population in our country cannot get the mortgage. Then you need another scheme, like a scheme for a housing alternative if the house in, is an emergency. Only in our country we have 90% of private housing ownerships, the highest percent, and we need to develop new segments. When you have your own property, 
a person is linked to the place and you have low mobility, but when you have uh, demand and rent in demand, well, if you find a better job, you move to another region, 30% are ready to move to other regions to relocate themselves, but they need uh, housing conditions and we need to monitor the growth of incomes, the availability, the cost. Now, the inflation, you, we have a pressure from the international inflation. Everything is getting more and more expensive. If you have higher availability, we have a look on availability, on how the mortgage principles work. It's no secret that in 2020 uh, the correct decision on open the mortgage uh, we took led to 2021, where we had the highest commissioning rate in a mid pandemic and the price for the construction materials went up. So together with the governors, this systemic work with the manual fine-tuning in construction, every governor today has a regional office with weekly meetings and we started to have results and the results are tangible. And the growth of the central bank rate uh, puts the market's development at threat, but we need to think on how to develop it. And the mortgage is something to regulate it. The central bank's rate was low and money flooded into the market. It started to develop. The situation is uh, more difficult now, but we need to find a mechanism on how to develop it, on how to offer benefits for different categories of residents. So the mortgage rate is 7% now. It's not that bad. And we expanded the categories of uh, beneficial residents, young families. We allowed people to invest in mortgage. So the mortgage helps to regulate uh, the rates. And the growth of uh, rented housing is it a strategy? At the moment, we have 9% of rented housing. Uh, where do you predict the highest demand? Well, that demand exists among different layers. If you take the richest layers, Moscow, people come, apartments, Moscow city, for instance, from the richest to the cheapest segments, where people, low-skilled workers come, what do they have to do? And I would also quote the case of Dubai. Uh, you have one million of, uh, Arabs and seven to eight millions who live in caravans to expensive apartments, but they still live in Dubai. And you have eight to ten millions of annual tourists. Uh, they built the infrastructure. Their income uh, comes from oil built by 14% only. And we need to create the opportunity for all these segments for all levels and renting is essential. You don't need to buy an apartment. Uh, if you find a job, you move in Vladivostok or in Sakhalin, a uh, clear example. They have a program for improving emergency housing. They built one meter per person. They are above the national uh, program. Federally, it's point eight, uh, uh, 82% per person. So 10 regions are above the limit. And we were told it's not possible. 
But it is possible if you have a systemic approach to this. And apart from encouraging uh, the demand among the consumers, do you have any strategy for encouraging the developers? We are stimulating developers indirectly, like, for example, we help, well, we make it easier for the regions to get money for building infrastructure, social infrastructure, roads or utilities. That's the way we stimulate developers, as I said, indirectly. We also have a program for low rate credit for low profitability projects but we don't have it applied on a large scale yet. This, the, the, the beauty of our construction sector is that, is that support from the state is very low and profitability is very high. So, but actually, whatever we invest in construction sector, we get back in the form of taxes. So our construction sector, our housing construction sector, is the most profitable sector for us now. So the state tends to invest very little and gets a lot in, 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 in form of taxes. And we are going to invest up to 70 trillion rubles into housing development, and most of this investment is going to be private investment. This is an enormous amount, yeah. So 7 trillion of infrastructure spending plus to that, plus 20 trillion in mortgage uh, money. And it's all private investment. State, state funding accounts for a very large, very low share of it. Yes, and this is what will help to create good cities with good infrastructure, good roads, and good quality of life. This is this is what I think you are focusing on or at your position of the deputy head of the government and responsible for construction sector. I wish you each and every success in your activity. And the last question I'd like to ask you is our forum is called Russia and in the world of priorities. Today you gave us your key highlights of the strategy, which is the priority for 2022. But apart from that, apart from your construction strategy and the strategy to develop utilities sector. What would be your priority? Our priorities are not changing. One of the priorities is to reduce the, let's say, construction lead time by 30 percent, procedure-wise. So we want to reduce 30 percent of all the regulatory procedures. Last year, we passed 27 amendments to various construction bills to make construction process easier. So, so we work with papers, we pass these amendments, and that helps reduce the length of investment cycle, meaning that you tend to get payback faster, meaning that your working capital may be less. So the speed of capital moving in the economy is the key issue for us. This is one of our priorities because construction is a very capital intensive sector. The second priority is to increase housing construction, housing volumes, because that also relates to several things. Building infrastructure, it relates to developing capability of construction material industry. Like Take China, for example. In China, housing strategy is one of the five pillars of China's economy. It's part of their strategy, it's part of their approach, and I believe that's the right approach to take, because that ultimately improves the quality of life, and that boosts your economy as well. So housing construction is our priority. And uh, we we have to, and we also have to ramp up our infrastructure efforts. 
So we had last year we made we have allocated funding in the amount of one trillion, and that's for infrastructure. And now you need to use this funding. You have to actually plan and build these infrastructure net, these utilities networks. Our federal construction program in total is one trillion a year. And now we have this one trillion allocated for two years for renewing and building utilities networks. So we have to use up to 500 billion from this funding a year. And this money, this funding, should also draw at least 1.5 trillion in private investment. So that's another 3 trillion and that needs to be ramped up. So these are our priorities for upcoming three years. I wish you luck with this success. Uh, I wish you luck with this program. Here is the end of our talk, but we continue working here at the Gaidar Forum. Thank you.